Hey, Nick. Hey. Hey, happy holidays. Happy holidays, Matt. Yep, yep. Oh, wait, uh, Christmas? Christmas. Christmas. That was that was a couple days ago. A couple days ago. Yeah. It's been a couple days. Well, I've needed a couple days myself. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I did too. I, I survived the, the retail hell. Yeah, mm-hmm. likewise. Yeah. Right. Different side of retail, but retail nonetheless. Right, right. It's not what you sell, it's that you sell. <laughs> That's right. Ah, no more inside jokes. So this is Horse Manus Unlimited. This is the after Christmas episode. Yeah. So we didn't get to do a before Christmas episode. That's right. Which is unfortunate because the with sickness the was still and, going around. Uh, man. The sickness, the illness was there, and but but here we are, um, um, virus free. Hey. Yeah, I said virus. I got a little bit, a little bit of a scratch, scratch, scratchy throat. Scratchy scratch. So let's get into it. Hey, uh, speaking of Christmas. Hey, why not? You bought your kid a, a, a video game system. Right, right. Did and you have to do any updating? I did not, but I have had to do this in the past. So from Rare dot US comes uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> comes a little, a little story, a little shindig about how parents are a little frustrated. A little frustrated. So with new systems, if you are unaware, anytime you buy one of these newer consoles... That being PS4, Xbox One. Right. Even, I mean, even the Wii U had yeah. some ridiculously long... <laughs> that it did, man. ...updates, software updates, system <laughs> updates. Then you've got, once you install those, then you throw the game in, and now you've got to install updates for the game itself. That's right. Which can be kind of frustrating, and some people took to Twitter this year, and, and on Christmas Day... Let them, let them have it, man. They were, and they were suffering, so... Yeah. It's, it's funny to think, though, that long gone are the days... So I, we were discussing not so much with the Switch. I still feel like the Switch is pretty instant. Switch is lightning quick, but it's it not... It, there's a lot of components. But long that, gone are the days where you could just go pick up a game, come home, throw it in your console. Plug it in and play. Man, I mean, this is, you know, the Atari, the Genesis, uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo. I mean, really, all the, the second, third gen consoles. I mean, because we're what, fifth gen now? What are we What are we talking about? Uh, yeah, fifth, sixth generation. Fifth, sixth you generation. know, some people consider it sixth, I guess. but Right, so these newer internet-connected consoles are, are just, wow, what yeah. a nightmare. So parents took to Twitter Christmas Day. And here are some of the highlights. Bob, whose uh, <laughs> handle is at Sweet, Sweet Chutney, Chutney, had this to say. Kids excited to play new Xbox. Takes two hours to update its system and the game that was just released last week. <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, Bob. Mm. Yeah. See, anymore, you know, there used to be a time where video game developers, when they released their game, that was it. That was it. There were no updates. There were no updates. No, the game was just the game. I there think, were no, there, there was no DLC. There was no, any 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 system enhancements you had to worry about. Right, right. Because the the fucking thing was what it was when right. it came out of the box. Nowadays, developers, you know, kind of go into this, th- you know, with the idea that we're gonna be adding content later. Right. It's it's, it's very Gatesian, it very is. Bill Gates. Let's uh, we're gonna throw it out there and fix it on the fly, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, hey, Bill Gates. It's working you know, so you far. Did it in Windows. You know, Windows ninety eight. Some people here. Here's a Nintendo Switch. Uh, interesting one here <laughs> yeah yeah christmas in 1987 get a nintendo spend the day playing games christmas in 2017 get a nintendo switch install mandatory system patches but internet is down well, try to add fault. credit card no go starts games need patches too total failure kids screaming christmas ruin mom what the fuck what the fuck mom? oh wow what the fuck you see and this this is a good tie-in to the net neutrality stuff we talked about because yeah, yeah. this could affect that yeah down the road we don't know so they, we just want to throw this out there because these are some Christmassy things, and we we both play a lot of video games. So this is great. Uh, Tom at Tom Norwood. Uh, for the first time in a month, I sit down to play a little Xbox, but no, can't do that. There's a system update required. I'm trying to play a three year old game offline. <laughs> just let me play. Yeah. And that that is the really frustrating thing. It's not the new games to me and the brand new consoles. It's sure. the new console and 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 offline feature. You shouldn't have to. What do you need to do there? They're yeah. just going to make you download this shit because you have the game and There's, you're playing it on yeah, your console. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, you know, Christmas is a time for a lot of things. And here in here in uh, North America, and especially in the United States, 
we we you know we're uh there's there's a religious uh component oh absolutely right uh, absolutely not the pagan one that that the the holiday was founded on right uh, you know the pagan feast day but right but, right right but you know <clears throat> there's a jesus birthday that that's been tied to things now i don't know about you but pretty sure he wasn't born in christmas on, on christmas day oh, that's yeah, not a thing. yeah we're not that's, gonna get into that debate right but it is interesting, the people that do believe that, and may believe other weird things about zombie carpenter's sons, uh, <laughs> might be subject to, to some form of, of uh, addiction or, or the mental processes yeah. which, which uh, drug users go through. What happens to your brain when you stop believing in God? So it's like going off a drug from what we're getting from tonic dot com. i really enjoyed this article matt right well because just the, the ideas uh, right the, you know the the ideas in it and 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 the author of the article obviously has his own stuff going and sure. he and i probably he or she and i probably agree on some things but it is interesting and it, it's been noted before that there's something about humans in in, in the prayer pose and humans uh singing hymns sure. and things like this sure. regardless of the the brand or the flavor of the of the the, the opiate and um, this this hits home for me personally mm -hmm. i mean uh there was a point in my life where i i did believe in god mm -hmm. um you know i was brought up not really with much of a choice but uh, brought up mormon and I think it was around... And you survived. I did, man. It was around nine, I think, maybe ten years old is when it kind of clicked. And, uh, you know, the <laughs> the fuzzy stories uh, started becoming even even more fuzzy. And, uh, I don't know. I just... Uh, it clicked with me one day where I was like, you know what? This is all a bunch of batshit craziness. Right. Now, now I'm the first to tell you that I, I think that, that religion probably does a lot of good for a lot of people. Absolutely. And and I think that's great. I think there's something My family, to be... I just have to say, mm -hmm. the most good-hearted, warm people, I mean, of all time. And I won't throw any names out there, but a few of my family members, this is what they do. I mean... Oh, yeah. They live for... You know, it's their piety cannot reach a maximum, right? And for a lot of people, this is kind of a way to keep themselves in check when they don't feel like they can necessarily do it on their own. Sure. And that's great because you have, you, you've acknowledged your problem mm -hmm. and this is your, your filler. This is what kind of slips in there because you know your own moral compass isn't exactly aiming true all the time. And sure. so I get that and I, I appreciate that. Uh, and, and that being said, we, we won't really, we're not going to dog the religious stuff too much here. I mean, mm -hmm. you and I are both pretty, pretty completely opposed to, to organized religion as a whole, Yeah, but that doesn't mean that that's not it, what this is really about. bugs and, me or, you know, right, whatever right. floats your boat, hey, man. Hey, to that's cool. His or her own. That's right. I, I do like to pick this out. Uh, one little excerpt out of this is it's like believing in Santa Claus. Psychologists... Thalia Goldstein and Jacqueline Woolley have found that children's disbelief in Santa Claus is progressive, not instantaneous. First kids think that the Santa in the mall or library is real. Then they think he's not real, but still magically communicates with the actual Santa and so on until they finally realize that Santa is composed of costumed actors. <laughs> the, the quote, kids don't just turn belief off. Sure, sure. They don't just they start turn connecting it off, the dots. Goldstein says. And know. I think that's important, especially with the holiday of Christmas. Yeah. You know, I still, my son doesn't believe in Santa. Spoiler alert, if you believe in Santa, this probably isn't for you. I'm not saying he's not real, by the way. I mean, hell, if the Jesus thing works, this is probably just as <laughs> right. good. Good point. I mean, this crosses all cultures just about. That's I mean, every culture has some form of Santa Claus or yeah. Krampus. Krampus, or, yeah. <laughs> right? I like the Krampus idea. Yeah, better. agreed. Because we'll then you shitty kids aren't getting cold. You ain't getting off that easy. You're just getting, <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're shitty or good. You're just getting thrown in a basket and whipped with reeds. Hey. Merry Christmas, little <laughs> fucker. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so moving on. So, I mean, it's a good little piece. And, and again, it's called What Happens to Your Brain When You Stop Believing in God. We're not going to read through the whole thing, but it's it's on Tonic, which is a, a brand of the Vice conglomerate. Yep. Yep, yep, so yep, you yep. can find that pretty easily on your own. Good read. Worth checking out. Certainly. Right. Certainly. <laughs> on to other things that you probably... We checked out for you. So yeah. you don't have to. Beetle penises. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetle Dick. <laughs> That's right. Beetle Dick. It's yeah. So only it's yeah. Right. So there's a Candy lot of penis. there's a lot of different penises out there, Nick, <clears throat> and and this is one of the stranger looking ones. 
Uh, this is actually from like a couple weeks ago. It was dolphin penises. No, uh, it was. It definitely was. We were yeah. talking about dolphin uh, sex organs, okay. and and here we are with beetle bits. Beetle bits uh, from from NPR. Uh, beetle penises may hold clues for better medical devices. Okay. So it's important <laughs> that we go ahead and and stop your your reeling brain right now. Uh, from whatever beetle porn you're drawing up in your head right now, we're just gonna stop you right there, okay? This isn't beetle porn. This is this is scientific research. Um, if you found this by searching for beetle porn, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> so uh, th- this is so the the beetle penis we we talked about looks like this. The studying studying the penis of a thistle tortoise beetle <laughs> may lead to a better design for medical catheters. Okay, so which is huge. Well, it is. Well, the catheter shouldn't be huge, but oh, but they, they are well, especially when they're full. Okay, so you, uh, yeah. Do you, do you have a, a catheter story you want to... Dude, there's a, yeah, there's a gentleman that I see about twice a week that comes into our shop. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Oh, he's have, like, the, the bag with him and the... Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, well, the bag Just might be big. Here real quick. The catheter itself, I mean, unless you got a <laughs> no, real... No, the catheter uh, itself. Unless you're a right, fucking right, sea lion right. of a man. Right. If you're a sea lion, it's, they, they got... So this wow. holds merit because this industry, the medical industry, has, has struggled with this problem. The right. engineering problem, right? Right. How do you keep a very thin tube flexible enough to snake into hard to reach places i like sn- i know right snake <laughs> snake i'm a slippery little snake S- i know gosh the euphemisms it's all coming <laughs> together today uh so but rigid enough to withstand insertion mm. this is, is done the i'm giggling on the inside <laughs> plus there's the problem of buckling ouch when a thin tube crimps so fluids can't flow through it anymore okay. right okay so there's a lot of problems. I thought that apparently. was called a kink. Uh, a little kink, kink in, the uh, in the hose. I know. I feel like, yeah, I feel like hose would have worked here. <laughs> so, it, uh, plus there's uh, the problem of hose. Right. So I love the hose. You got to watch out for the hose. I love the way this is written. Uh, the next, the next little paragraph. Yeah. Enter the penis of the thistle tortoise beetle. <laughs> and and you know tortoise beetle vaginas everywhere got moist. Yeah. Right. I just hear all these leaves crumpling. All the leaves are crumpling. Yeah. The, 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 the hive noises. That's what <laughs> I hear. Has a few things going for it from a scientific perspective. First, like many insect penises, it is enormously long compared with the creature itself. At 10 millimeters, it is longer than the beetle's entire body. Damn. Second, it's capable of contorting to trace the coiled sex, sexual organ of the female beetle. Okay. So, you know, the again, the animal kingdom and all of its strange penises. You know, you had the uh, the, the raccoons with the, the little yeah, bone in right, there. Yeah, that's right, that's right. The the bone in. I love this quote. Uh-huh. Yeah. The tip is curved, curved a little bit, explains Yoko Matsumura. Oh. Who uh, studies biomechanics at Kiel University in Germany and is the author of the new study published Wednesday in the Journal of Science Advances. Mm. She and two colleagues set out to test how the beetle's long hooked penis bends to navigate the female coils. Mm. I mean, this is kind of like beetle smut. Five ten. Does thread. this feel like? It? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, this kind of feels like we're reading like one of those those shitty romance novels. Yeah, except right. There's beetles. Yeah, no kidding. His, his hooked, coiled, throbbing <laughs> member. Wow. Wow. She they reached for my it. thigh. <laughs> <laughs> my thistle tortoise beetle <laughs> penises. Yeah. Over, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, so that's a thing. Uh, so catheter research, if you're interested in it, uh, they are... Com- if you're interested in catheter research, <laughs> <laughs> please click this link above our head. <laughs> there won't be a link no. there. We're not linking this. Uh-uh. I, I'm pretty sure if you if you Google beetle penis, you're either going to be entertained or you're going to read this. Or you're going to be flagged, you know. Flagged. Probably flagged. Uh, you're probably a terrorist. <laughs> probably. So uh, speaking of, of odd... Uh, uh, yeah, God. this is a little strange. So this week's... We've covered the butt plug. Oh, right. We've this covered week's the hackable dildo. Marriage of technology and sexual deviance comes to us from the good people at Motherboard. Uh, we'll just, let's just do this. Yep. Um, now you can literally get fucked by the price of Bitcoin. So this is kind of a timely thing that Nick and I looked at and said, Hey, everybody's talking about Bitcoin. Yep. 
Well, here's some here's a Bitcoin story for you. <laughs> here's a bit of news for so, you. So if you don't know about Bitcoin, I don't know how to help you there. It's imaginary money. Yep. All right. Yep. It's not like Monopoly money because we can see and touch that. It's just imaginary money. Boop. It's a made up currency. There's several different types of made up currency. Right, right. But it holds value because someone said it holds value, kind of like the US dollar. Hey. hey. Look at that. All Matt. right. So this shit is not far fetched at all. I love the whole Bitcoin thing. I think it's great. I it mean, is. that's that's how currency works. Yep. This is probably not how you want currency to work, especially after the last couple of weeks. The ups and downs of the Bitcoin market, a lot of activity. Yeah. Okay. Whole lot of activity. It was up to like 17k like what last week? Good God. Which is a lot of a lot of simoleons. <laughs> So, here we have a connected sex toy that syncs with every ebb and flow of the cryptocurrency market. <laughs> Jesus, your genitals are chapped if you tried this thing last week. Ooh, chafing. Holy hell. So, who makes this thing, Nick? Uh, this is brought to us by uh, Lovins. Uh, the okay. Lovins. Now, they make some other things. They do. They have a whole sex toy line. They uh, do. And they are kind of pioneers in this stuff because I feel like they made the uh, the butt plug, too. They did. They did. They made the uh, the butt plug that we talked about. The, the reason the... I know this is this paragraph here is telling me this. Uh, oh, they do discreet. Right. Ooh, discreet butt plugs. Discreet. All of my butt plugs aren't discreet. Well, right? they're all discreet if you're they're employed. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I, how are you going to know unless you're, I mean. Prostate you... massagers. I didn't even know that was a thing. Well, I mean, you know, why not? I mean, I mean isn't that what a butt plug is? Well, kind of, but, but uh, you know, but. Yeah. I guess I got. Uh. <sighs> So cool. the prostate massager thing is probably, well, we're, we're not going to get into that. So anyhow, so this thing hooks up and it hooks to a site. Uh, so there's a service called BitCast. Uh -huh. it, it tracks the real-time value of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin in U.S. dollars on a chart that syncs with the line of internet-connected Lovin's toys. Sex toys, yeah. When the value goes up, the vibrations intensify. When it goes down, the vibes back off. So if the Bitcoin takes off, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite line when the because motherboard they they kind of just they, they they're guerrilla journalists here when the cryptocurrency bubble inevitably bursts, <laughs> the toy overheats and blows your dick off. <laughs> okay. That doesn't happen. No, but doesn't. but so this is kind of a, an interesting thing because with the rise and falls. There, sh there are other rises <laughs> and falls. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. Well, speaking of people that got fucked this week. Oh, uh, man. This is pretty funny. They got fucked today, uh, know. December 27th. December 27th, we're time stamping this. So, couple charged with using drone to deliver illegal drugs. <laughs> yeah. The war Somebody on drugs is by far the biggest, uh, most laughable and unfortunate uh, undertaking any government has ever, ever been involved in. Marijuana. Let alone ours. Marijuana. Um, I'm a huge proponent of legalizing all of it. Just legalize all of it, okay? You look at countries where it's all legal, uh, the, the nature of the problems they're having are much, much different. Much different. Mm -hmm. And I would argue probably a lot less serious than the shit that we have going on. It's a losing war. It's not a war because it's just it, who's getting slaughtered? The taxpayer's getting slaughtered. Right. We're paying for this shit, and they're seizing marijuana. Okay, good job. Yeah. Fucking morons. So these people were not not too too much better though. Uh, a couple, so a couple from Riverside, California. Right, Riverside, California. They right. were charged yesterday with dealing drugs out of their Riverside home and using a drone to deliver them to their customers. You know, you could thank Amazon for this because I was gonna say dude, this is absolutely absolutely. So this is kind of fun because it's another little tech story, and and somebody enjoys the byproduct. Uh, so <laughs> Benjamin Paul. Valdassari, 39, and Ashley Lauren Carroll, 31, were arrested Thursday after an undercover police investigation into alleged illegal activity at Baldassar's restaurant. Restaurant. <laughs> I had to. I feel like yeah, I'm talking no, about Pokemon yeah, here. No, you're good, man. This is residence, authorities said. <laughs> they, they were charged with three counts of possession of controlled substances for sale. Oh. Baldassar. Uh, <laughs> child endangerment. <laughs> And possession of drug paraphernalia, Thor blood. I feel like this would be an easy, easy one to scope out, right? Right. So well, he said drone. Mm, right. So he takes off his package. Mm. So here's 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 where they fucked up. The, the biggest and and from the story, if you read the story, the the cops noticed that this drone was going over to a they were going over to a public parking lot. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't it doesn't the drone doesn't replace the, the your you in a car 
in the, the proximity in, that this thing has to be in from the residence. From it to work, right. You're not going to get any kind of long distance business going there. You might as well there. just go out back with your slingshot, right? I mean, they could have just driven over there and yeah, gotten right. away with it. Yeah, this. yeah, right. But it's like, oh, fuck it. I don't want to take this. I, I don't want to walk for yeah, my money. I'm not meeting you on the side of the gas station again. A little bit of ingenuity. And, and, and this stuff's been reported, uh, you know, across the Mexican border and mm-hmm. things like that. So this isn't necessarily a new use of this technology, but... You know, here's the thing. I mean, who's going to monitor all these drones? If this stuff stuff starts happening more and more, right? it could get interesting with less populated areas. Sure. You know, I'm sure it'd be... You see one of these out in parachute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So... Actually, that wouldn't be... A this would have been fun in Breaking Bad. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah Catheter so, Lazarus. Catheter Lazarus. 